major from Jackson, New Jersey, and I go to Howard University. Um, I wanted to make this video just to give a little bit more insight into my application process thus far. Just to start off, I want to give like a mid-cycle recap because there are a lot of questions about my stats after I got accepted into Columbia. So I scored in the low 160s in my LSAT, on my LSAT and I have a 3.75 GPA. When I first applied to law school, I had a 3.72, um, but after the first semester ended, you're able to go ahead and like update your else, I mean your GPA, um, just by providing another transcript. So I just did that. Whether or not that had anything to do with my acceptances, I'm not sure, but that's just something to note. I have applied to Columbia, Howard, Northwestern, U Chicago, Emory, George Washington, Georgetown. USC and UCLA. So far, I have gotten into Columbia, Howard, USC Gold School of Law, um, George Washington. I got deferred from Georgetown, but it's okay. Um, they told me that I would find out by the end of February just so that they can get a better sense of the applicant pool, which is completely fine. Um, still waiting to hear back from those five schools. Okay, so I'm going to start the video off talking about the pre-law program that I did because I feel like it'll answer a lot of the questions. Um, I participated in Catalyst by SEO. If you're not familiar with SEO, it is, or rather the SEO Law Fellowship is a fellowship that you would apply to. Um, while you're applying to law school, so I just submitted my application a few weeks ago, and they place you, if selected, into a top law firm the summer before your first year of law school. You get a ton of networking opportunities and just some exposure to what it's really like to work at a law firm before a lot of your classmates, which is a great opportunity. Um, I've always known about the fellowship, but this past August they launched something called Catalyst by SEO, which is a pre-law program. And so the pre-law program ran from August to November, and if you were selected, you have to agree to participate in an eight-week prep course. The prep course that they provided, completely free, was by Manhattan Prep. So I participated in that for eight weeks. I took the LSAT again in October. Um, in addition to the LSAT prep, I got individualized application review from the used Ivy Grad Services. So I was working with an admissions coach to for my personal statement and my diversity statement, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. Um, I got to do these law school tours, so I was able to sit on a Zoom call with like five or six other people in the program and the admissions, of, like Dean of Admissions from Harvard, Yale, Columbia, Georgetown, all these top schools and ask them anything I wanted to about the application process and kind of what they look for in a good candidate. I have two mentors who are practicing attorneys at Kirkland and Ellis, which is a great law firm. My mentors have been completely helpful. Let me prepare for my interviews. They've helped me look over my resume and my application materials as well. Um, in addition to all that, I have now been connected to current SEO law fellows. So those are people who just completed their summers at law firms and are now in their 1L years at law school. Um, I also have been able to attend workshops and panels on navigating the application process, writing your essays, um, how to choose who's going to write your letter of recommendation, um, what else? How to preserve your mental health during this process because it's a really long journey, all the way down to financing your legal education. So the program now is going to be running from, I believe, March until like all the way past November. So it's about like nine months now instead of like the three months it was for me, which is great. Um, but I'm mentioning it because the application closes on Friday and I really want everybody to know about this program because I honestly don't think that I would have gotten into the law schools that I have thus far if it was not for Catalyst. The application does close on Friday. Here's like the flyer to more specific um, program like benefits and resources. I'm going to link the application down below. I think it requires a resume, a transcript, a 300 word-ish response to a question, and a list of the top five law schools that you intend to apply to. It is also worth mentioning that this program, SEO, is specifically for students of color. So please, please apply. The application closes on Friday. If anybody needs me to like look over anything, I will definitely do that. But you would only be applying to this program by Friday if you plan on applying to law schools like in the fall. Um, like starting in September when they open. Okay, so the next section of this video is going to be a Q&A and I felt like this would be really helpful because 
I don't want to just ramble about this. So let's start. Um, oh, I like this one. If I could go back to the beginning of my admission cycle, what would I tell myself? I think I would tell myself not to compare like my journey to anybody else's. Obviously, like I go to Howard, there's a lot of people who are applying to law schools. It can be a little bit um, disheartening when like you see people's like posting and it's great. Like obviously, like I want everybody to get into whatever law school they choose to. But if your application process is going a bit slower than other people's, comparison is definitely the thief of joy. And so I think that my biggest thing that I would tell myself is that like my journey is my own and that it's going to just move as quickly or as fast as it's supposed to. And that's just that. Do I have a top choice? Yeah, it's Columbia. Before, when I was going into this at first, I was like, it's between Columbia and Howard. Um, just some background in that, like, Columbia was definitely a reach for me. Um, if you look, now that you know my stats, you can go look and see what the average LSAT score is for Columbia. Um, God was looking out, and so here we are, that's all I'll say. And my top choice is definitely Columbia, though. Um, when did I start? I don't know if this means when did I start applying or when did I start studying, but there's also a question about that. So I will tell you guys, I started studying at the end of March. Um, I signed up for a class through Strategy Prep. It was supposed to be in person in DC and it was supposed to last me from like April to July because I took the LSAT for the first time on July 13th. And I started studying, yeah, with the class from around that time. Um, I took the class called LSAT Demon and it was not for me. I would definitely recommend that you guys do your research on different LSAT courses because they're really expensive. That class cost $1,400, so there's that. Um, what did your typical study week or day look like? How long did you study and how many days per week? I studied six days a week. Um, I guess I'll start like on Saturday, so I took a practice test every Saturday. I think the biggest thing going into studying is that you should not, the first time you take a full length LSAT should not be the day you take the official LSAT. The biggest thing that helped me was taking practice tests once a week and then reviewing those, like what I got wrong, what I got, even what I got right, and then building onto it. That way I wasn't continuing to make the same mistakes that I was going into the next practice test. I was really able to see a lot of growth through that. I was taking a test on Saturday. Maybe I spent the next week after that, um, you know, focusing on the questions that I got wrong. And then the next time I took a test the following Saturday, I didn't get those type of questions wrong. Um, if that makes sense. So yeah, I was taking a practice test every Saturday and then Sunday I would review the practice test. Um, that was really important too. You don't just want to take the test and then go away from it. You're not going to learn anything if you just take the test and never look at it again. There's a method called blind review that you guys can do a little bit more research on, but basically after I took every test, I would like circle, well during, during the time I was taking the test, I would circle or maybe mark a question that I wasn't too sure about. After I took the test, I would go back and then re-answer the questions without knowing if I got it right or wrong. It really helps with the process of like learning information, making sure it sticks. So yeah, Saturday I took a test, Sunday reviewed, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I was either in class or studying on my own or both. So I would study for about three to four hours a day. If I had class that afternoon though, I would count that as half of that time. So say if I had class on Tuesday, in the morning, I'd study for an hour and a half maybe, and then in the afternoon, I had class. If it was Wednesday, I studied for an hour and a half in the morning after I get off of work, um, because when I was studying in the summer, I had an internship, I was getting off of work at five. Um, I'd probably have a snack, and then I would go study again, and then um, I would just do my thing for the rest of the night, whatever. But yeah, definitely took a day off. It was honestly normally Fridays, um, just so that I could go into the practice test feeling really energized. Um, how long did I study for the LSAT? I studied for the first time for from April to July, so about three and a half months because I took it July 13th, and then um, I took a break when I was waiting for my score to come back, and then um, I started studying again at the end of August when I found out that I got accepted to the Catalyst program because I had to take the LSAT again in October. So then by that time I was studying for about eight weeks yeah because the prep course was eight weeks so yeah 
You're supposed to study for at least three to four months before you take the LSAT. Staying disciplined studying for the LSAT. I would say blocking out the times really helped for me. I had an internship from June all the way until literally a week before I took the LSAT in July. So it helped me to have a routine and a schedule. Um, it helps if you already have the time blocked off because you're more likely to do it. That's what one of like my LSAT um, tutors told me. LSAT study tips. Yeah, it would be the same thing. Just making sure you take that practice test. It's really important. Reviewing the answers that you got wrong is so important. You're not going to learn anything. And I know I sound redundant, but you're not going to learn anything if you don't um, review the questions that you got wrong because you're just going to keep making the mistake and you're not going to see an increase on your score at all. Okay, the next questions are about when did I start applying. I started applying, I think I submitted all my applications by October 29th. And the scores came out for the October LSAT on October 23rd. My original plan was to submit all my applications by September 1st. But I joined the Catalyst program and I had to take the LSAT again in October. And so obviously I was going to wait to apply. But I'm really glad that I did that because of the fee waivers. Back in September when the applications opened, most of them opened on September 1st, um, I didn't get fee waivers. But as the weeks kept going by, I got fee waivers to seven out of the nine schools that I applied to, just like automatically. Um, some people say it's based on stats. I'm not really sure, but that was $85 that I did not have to pay for seven schools. So I'm very grateful for that. Okay, where to apply for financial aid? Every school is different. Um, obviously, you're going to have to do your FAFSA, which is something that we did back in October. And some schools you'll automatically be considered for scholarships. Some schools you might have to fill out a separate application for like grants. Um, an example, Columbia, I have to do that. I actually have forms that are due by February 15th if I want to be considered for some need-based grants. So I um, have to fill that out. Um, but it really just depends on the school. Um, some schools also have like separate scholarships like included in your application like USC has one I'm pretty sure and you would write the essay in response to the essay and it's like included on your application Okay, so now we're talking about what the requirements were for Choosing like for the schools that I applied to I wouldn't say there's any requirements I don't know if you mean like application wise or like numbers wise I with my stats like on paper, it does not look like I would have gotten into Columbia, it does not look like I would have even gotten into USC or GW because my numbers are below their medians, um, but shoot your shot, because I shot mine. Let's see. As far as like application requirements, some asked for very specific things on their resume, like University of Chicago, they asked for you to put hours next to each experience on your resume. Um, but that's why it's really important for you to look at the instructions on each application when you start them. When did I start my personal statement? I started my personal statement in September. We did about six rounds of edits probably and it was ready by the time my score came out at the end of October. Um, how did I choose what I would write my personal statement on? My admissions coach and I went through these writing exercises. I think she asked me what motivated me, what I wanted my legacy to be, and why law. All three of the responses to those questions were kind of formulated into what is now my personal statement. Um, it's a little bit of a personal story, but that's just because like it is a very personal story as to why I wanted to become an attorney in the first place. So having an admissions coach was really, really helpful. And I would say what makes a good personal statement, they don't want, the admissions officers do not want to just see you regurgitate your resume. I know that because I was able to sit on these law school tours because of Catalyst, shameless plug, definitely apply, um, and the admissions officers were telling us how they hate to read personal statements that just tell you all about the things that you've done at undergrad or like at your job after undergrad, and it's just like they saw all that in your resume. Like This is a time for you to stand out and show just your true and authentic self. Um, I would definitely say at the end of your personal statement, you should add a little blurb about why that specific law school. So my personal statement that I submitted to every school is exactly the same, with the exception of that like three to four sentence section at the end of my personal statement where it says, these are the reasons why I think Columbia Law would be a great place for me in addition to, for example, I mentioned Kimberly Crenshaw. If you're not familiar, she is the professor um, who did the TED talk on intersectionality 
And so I mentioned her and I also mentioned like some other law clinics and I did that for every school, obviously being specific to what that school had to offer. The personal statement was difficult for me. Was it a piece of your application that you prioritized? For sure. I knew that I was shooting my shot. I'm going to keep saying that, but I knew that I was shooting my shot with these schools. I knew that, once again, going back to the law school tours, that that officer's admissions office is looking at your application in a very holistic view. So I knew that my stats weren't really where they needed to be, that my essay, my ledger recommendation were really, really going to make me stand out. So I made it a priority to make sure that I had a bunch of people read my personal statement, not even just for grammar, but just to make sure that it sounded like me because you'll also realize that the admissions office can kind of tell when you know, it doesn't really sound like you. It sounds like you might be like reaching a little bit. It, like people can pick out when things just don't sound genuine. What do you think made you stand out as an applicant? Um, I'm really involved on campus. So I would say all of that. Um, I'm president of an Oregon campus. I am a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I've worked on student council for three years and I've also had leadership positions in a freshman um, leadership organization on campus. Um, in addition to that, my letters of recommendation were, I would like to say, very strong. They come from three people who know me very well in different capacities. One of my letters of recommendations is from a past professor that I had who's also my advisor for an organization that I'm president of now. Um, the other letter of recommendation is from my boss at the nonprofit that I've been interning at for the past year, and she's also an attorney herself. And my last letter of recommendation is from the Associate Vice President of Student Affairs at Howard, who I have had a great relationship with since I got to Howard, especially because he's worked very closely with me in one of the orgs that I had a leadership position in. If I plan on going to law school fall 23, when should I start studying for the LSAT? You should start studying for the LSAT the spring before you would submit your applications. So you'd be submitting your applications in fall 2022, so you need to start studying spring or summer of 2022, yeah. How did you decide what law schools to apply to? Um, what was your main criteria in choosing schools to apply to? Location had a lot to do with it. If you notice, all the schools that I applied to are in like a major city. I always knew I wanted to be in a city. I'm from New Jersey, a very small town in New Jersey. Always wanted to live in a city, so that had a lot to do with it. I want to do big law, so all the schools that I am applied to have a very good like turnout rate, I guess, for big laws, which you would say. When you're researching schools, you should be looking at everybody's ABA report. They give you breakdowns of like where their graduates end up and like what cities, what states. Um, they also give you breakdowns of ages, LSAT scores, of applicants or rather of um, the class and everything like that. So you should definitely look. Every school has one. It gives you the best like snapshot of each school. They also show bar passage rate. It's definitely something you should look into. What is my ultimate career goal and why did I feel law school was necessary for me? Um, my ultimate career goal is to work in entertainment law. Um, I, that was not always the goal for me, um, but I would like to work into entertainment law and pour into my passion in other ways. So if you know me personally, you know I'm very like passionate about education um, and civil rights, so I would love to open up a nonprofit um, after like doing some big law, but I would also like to do some public interest work as well. So I guess the short answer to that is that I really do not know. I do know that I like to read and know about the law and I think it's very important. And so yes, to be a lawyer advocating for these rights and to be able to do this in like a, in a way that people would respect my advocacy because I have a law degree. Yes, I think that this um, law school is definitely necessary for me. Someone also asked if I added an addendum to my app. I did not add an addenda to my application. If you don't know, an addenda or addendum is um, what you would add. It's like a segment on the application that asks you like, if you want to explain something further. Um, so you would maybe explain like a bad semester or maybe you scored lower your second time you took the LSAT. You would explain that as well. Um, I did not do that, but I know people who have. So that wraps up the video. I hope it was helpful. I know how it is to go into this with kind of like a blind eye. So I am just really grateful that I'm in the position to be able to kind of share just some tips and tricks about how to navigate this process. I'm going to link my Instagram below and please feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions.